am an only child. I have no siblings. I mean, that's the meaning of an only child. So I get my amusement or my company from my parents. So I like to say, like, I'm pretty close to my parents, my mom and dad, and we joke around a lot. My dad, he thinks he's the funniest guy ever, um, especially towards my friends. If my friends came over, he'd approach them, and he'd go, sup, dog. I try to tell him that's not normal. He doesn't listen. He thinks he's very cool. Um, there's this other instance where he calls Adele, the singer, Adele, because he thinks that that's how it should be said. And he argues with me on everything, even though he knows I'm right, just to tick me off. Oh, sometimes I just wish I could call the cops on my pops, because he is crazy. But, you know, sometimes that's what makes me smile. That's what makes my day, because he's my entertainment. He makes me so happy. He removes this amount of stress off my back, and I'm so grateful for him. I've never really been to um, a crazy party. I've never, you know, drunk, I mean, outside of my house, like, had a drink or gone clubbing or anything like that. I'm only 15, but I know other kids my age have done so. And um, I don't know why they do so. I think that right now with the amount of work and stress we have, it really shocks me how do they have the time, even though we're, I'm only in 10th grade. I know it gets more stressful later on, but it, 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 it makes me curious. It intrigues me that what is the joy in that? I mean, of course, I'm, I, I, I don't know. It might be fun going out with your friends and having a drink, laughing up and... But really, is it worth it in the end? I mean, what if the cops came? What if, what if you got in trouble? It's it's your whole whole career goes down the line. You have a re record. Um, your parents find out. And if my parents found out that I drank or went out clubbing, oh god, I don't think you'd see me in like a year. Maybe I get shipped off to boarding school. society, in Singapore especially, um, the rules here are very strict. We don't have much freedom. There's not much freedom of speech or freedom of press, and the biggest thing that's happened is a riot that happened downtown where um, a bus got pushed over. That's about it. Nothing big, but the case was blown huge, and it was really not right. And then you see the U.S. and other countries in the world where there's so much crime happening, and you think, wow, we are such a tight, enclosed country. We are trapped in this little bubble. The police, the, the, the government is, is trapping us. We associate the police and, and the security forces as someone we can rely on, someone that can come to our help. But really, can they? I mean, You can look at it in two, two ways, I think, that um, if you're in a situation where you need help, you call the cops, they come, they help you out. Um, I've never had to do so yet. And you can look at it from the other perspective that they come on their own and you get unfair treatment. I think that if we were – sometimes we're not that lucky. Sometimes people get treated unfairly for things that they do. Sometimes, really, they deserve better, especially criminals. I mean, they don't get to plead their case. They don't get to know why they're being detained. And is it because of a single phone call to the cops? I don't know. You tell me. Thank you. Be really weird to give a speech to Seth. <laughs> I don't know what, like, what made you start disliking me. Is this something I did? Oh, Seth, if you think that. Are you serious? 
Oh God, because he almost broke my heart. No, but sometimes it's like, you want to hear what the people <coughs> use? Like, oh, are you talking? Oh, come on now. No. Are you messing? Am I? Because last night. No, no. At eleven o'clock when I'm going to bed, I'm I'm, I'm not going like. Message at like seven. <laughs> so <laughs> not trying to play that with me. I'm fine. Uh, yeah. Just trying to lighten the mood a bit. Okay. Um, so hmm, that was interesting, wasn't it? Because I was wondering if she was going to give a speech about dad the whole time, because she started with "Call the cops on dad, I love mm -hmm. dad," that sort of thing, and he's he did "Call the cops to tell the world to start studying philosophy," <laughs> and then he talked about philosophy the whole time, and then at the end he came back to "Call the cops," but he did come back to crazy parties and cops, and then no, there's no cops in Singapore and that sort of thing. Um, and again, this, this one is proving to be difficult for people. I'm surprised people don't choose popcorn. Um, but that doesn't matter. Um, you recover well. Uh, when you have silences, mm -hmm. which that's what happens in difficult ones, and so this is one of those things, right? So, so when you have them, you typically, uh, there's two things I want to, you to notice when you watch yourself. One is that your face shows that you're like, you know, you're about to laugh or something. So your face is totally transparent, and you're not keeping that poise where, look, I'm having a meltdown inside, <laughs> but you can't tell that. Um, and second, I think those, those things might be reduced if when you do hit those tough parts, and it seems like you hit parts where you're like, oh god, I had no idea what I'm going to say next. And so you will, and, and that's part of unprompted. And so you hit a silence, you get slightly uncomfortable. There's a long silence. You look up. And then you change the subject. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and Ms. Faithley and I were talking about this with somebody else earlier. Perhaps a way to de awkwardize that is to just go, you know, at the moment that's all I got to say about this. But there's got to be more. What else can be said about? Yeah, just talk talk through that weird silence, and it makes it less uncomfortable for you and them. The audience all comes together and like, yeah, we're on your side now. Like, we're not worried about you. We're, we're interested that you're you're so open about the difficulties of walking your tight open in front of us because that's what this is. Right? Uh, oh, good, thank you. Uh, yep. So yeah, I guess in a, in the simplest terms, instead of trying to hide the discomfort. Just Keep just, just like really openly, you know, acknowledge it and even play with the audience. Or not play, but just share with the audience. I know you got to stop it. It's That's good. Okay. <coughs> Any consolation? I didn't answer his Lord of the Flies messages last night either. Okay, girlfriend. Okay, girlfriend. Like, oh, I'm rereading. Don't. <laughs>